Hello and welcome to a fast interview from New Zealand. Uh, during my trip here I'm speaking with a number of candidates and activists so we can all get an insight into the politics of New Zealand, uh, what are the issues in this campaign and also uh, what Australia can, can learn from this. Today I'm speaking with uh, Bob McCorsky, did I say that right? McCorsky, but that's McCorsky. Right. It's harder to spell than say. Who is the National Director of uh, Family First New Zealand, which is the nation's uh, peak conservative lobby group. So Bob, thank you for talking with us. No, nice to meet you, Tim. So I'll start uh, as broadly uh, as possible. What do you consider to be the values of New Zealanders and how does that influence your campaigning? Well, I think New Zealand was founded on Judeo-Christian values, uh, but that has been slowly rejected over time, um, especially in the 90s. The Labour government of the 90s were very proactive in trying to declare that we were a secular country. Uh, and it's, um, you know, that kind of attitude has crept more and more as society has become more secularised. So I think the, the polling, the, the, the survey's census suggests that about half of New Zealanders uh, declare some allegiance to a church or faith of some sort. Um, but in terms of active church going, it's a lot less, you know, attending church on a regular basis. So it's a, it's a time of challenge. It sounds like uh, going through the same demographic changes, mm -hmm. Australia. So, how do you how does how do you reach people with your your lobbying with with that demographic change? Yeah, the more I hang around Australian um, and also Americans and, and Brits, uh, we're all facing the same challenges, the same issues uh, coming up. So, you know, I think it's uh, I, I I do think that there is a silent majority. There's a conservatism that is still around that holds to those Judeo-Christian values, but um, they're being shouted down and they're being intimidated and bullied to be quiet. Uh, and I can see that happening in current debate going on in Australia. Um, and it happens, you know, it happens far too often. And by nature, we're conservative. So we're not in for the scrap. We often don't want to front up. We don't want that uh, abuse. But I think we need to front up. Um, I love a quote from Winston Churchill who said, um, that when a brave person takes a stand, uh, it just uh, it stiffens the spines of others. And I think that's true. When one person stands up and says something, uh, it does stiffen the spine of other people. And I think that's important. Uh, did I, Winston Churchill? I think it might have been Billy Graham, actually. I think it was Billy Graham who said it. Yeah. Uh, so def definitely, although there are these uh, uh, church tendencies in decline, obviously, you know, family is still like that's well throughout history that's that's always been, been important so people are always you know, wanting to look after the best interests of the family so certainly that's where um, you feel that you're relevant. Yeah uh, look the natural family is a fundamental unit of society we've, we've the country has signed UN declarations saying that um, the problem is that then you've also got a push coming out of the same bodies like the UN and government saying that uh, you know, abortion should be uh, on demand, that gender should be uh, determined by the person based on feelings, not on fact. Uh, and so a lot of this ideology, you know, even the push for euthanasia, decriminalisation of prostitution, all those types of things have come in that are harming families. And so you know, we want to stand up and, and be a voice against those things. Well, let's turn to the, the issues of this campaign now. Uh, obvious, obviously, uh, after the election, the New Zealand Parliament will have a vote on a private member's bill to legalise euthanasia, but also the issue of abortion has come into prominence this campaign with the Labour leader, Jacinta Ardern, saying that if she's elected, she'll take uh, abortion uh, out of the, the Crimes Act. Um, what's, do you, do you, are you concerned that the uh, movement on these two issues uh, it could, prog could progress? What's your reading of the situation? <laughs> My reading is that um, if Labour and Greens were to form the next government, it would move quickly in that direction. But if the current government stays in power, it will move slowly in that direction. That's the only difference. This, um, you know, there's not a lot you know, stopping it. There's, there's pushes to decriminalise marijuana and decriminalise abortion and to decriminalise euthanasia and you know we've already gone down the track of decrim decriminalising prostitution and, and banning snacking and, uh, and, and same sex marriage, redefining marriage. So um, you know there is this gradual creep unfortunately 
uh, and conservative governments aren't uh, rolling them back. They're just sort of standing there, not doing anything. Sometimes they actually help it along. Uh, you know, John Key, the, the Prime Minister of supposedly a centre-right government, uh, championed um, same-sex marriage. So uh, that's that's the difficulty, is that there's this constant creep and there's not really representation in Parliament for the huge proportion of people who actually don't want it to happen that way. For example, uh, when same-sex marriage was um, passed in 2013 in New Zealand, uh, the, uh, the polls showed that the country was uh, completely split down the middle. Um, and it should have got to a referendum, it should have had a side in New Zealand as well. Uh, but the politicians pushed it through two to one. Um, so, you know, they're not fully representing New Zealanders. Yeah, I have, when I looked at the, the polling for, for same-sex marriage in New Zealand, it was interesting. It was pretty much split down, split down the middle, but the, the politicians just, just went ahead and did it. Yeah, and they rushed it through uh, very fast. Um, you know, like there was 21,000 submissions, which is uh, probably one of the biggest responses to a uh, government bill. And um, they somehow the select committee were able to hear all those submissions in six months. But what they did was that they discounted a whole of the submissions and said that they were form letters, you know, that people had just ticked a box saying I'm against it or I'm for it. Uh, but of course they weren't. We put out a kind of a... a uh, a sheet showing what details were required, but people still had to write their own submission. But the, the select committee was sneaky in my view and discounted these as form letters, you know, kind of like signing a petition, which they weren't. So, uh, yeah, it was pushed through at speed, and I think they did it because they knew that the longer the debate went on talking about the fact that there was no need to change the definition of marriage and the fact of potential outcomes, they knew that they were going to start to lose the debate. And I, and I think that will, that will, is starting to happen in Australia. Yeah, with, uh, with regard to obviously the debates that you're facing with uh, abortion and euthanasia, it's been pleasing to see that there is some pushback against uh, mainly Jacinta Ardern. Uh, you know, a lot of people are not happy with this and there, there seems to be um, a, a view among normal New Zealanders that the laws are, are working fine at, fine at the moment. So do you think, are you optimistic on that front or? Um, there's, there's pushback but I think the pushback is just coming because we're in a political season and it's um, convenient for certain parties to push back because basically they just want to unsettle and create conflict and uncertainty. Um, so what will happen after the election? That, that's a, that's a a really big question. Perhaps we should redo this interview in a month or two when the new parliament is formed and we see what their real agenda is once they get power. Well, with regard to uh, abortion, this is my letter of warning. Uh, fr I'm from Victoria, Australia, where we probably have the worst abortion law in the, the Western world, which is... Oh, right Canada. Right, Close to Canada. Yeah, right up until uh, birth, mm -hmm. uh, for, for any reason, just mm -hmm. doctors need to sign off mm -hmm. on it. And we've also enacted exclusion zones outside mm. abortion clinics. So that's pretty much yeah. Labor and the Abortion mm. Law Reform Association. That's what that's what they'll push yeah. if when they, when they say take abortion out of the Crimes yeah. Act. Yeah, yeah, and we've seen all those warnings. We've seen the anecdotal evidence. Uh, we've researched Canada. We've researched Victoria, um, and you know I think we're completely right to express concern. The ultimate goal is to, obviously, it's about the conflict of rights between the rights of the woman and the rights of the unborn child. Um, we argue that we're for both. We're for the unborn for the unborn child, but we're also for the long-term well-being of the woman as well. Yeah, d uh, definitely. I mean, I've um, been around the, the pro-life movement for a number of years now, and uh, all the, the things that are, that are said about them, that, you know, they don't care about, you know, the mother or the child, it's, it's, it's just not true. No, it's not, but it's a very effective stance because it tries to paint you in a negative light. Uh, but that's where I think we need to, um, you know, counter with good, strong uh, argument and, and you know, um, bring up the research which talks about, for example, out of New Zealand, uh, there's some very solid research from um, uh, Christchurch School of Medicine who have done this longitudinal study uh, of children up uh, since they were zero up to, they're now I think about 40, so the study's been going 40 years, but it found that actually there is 
um, the greater risk of mental harm to women who have had abortions. Now, women aren't being told this information. Um, interestingly enough, we actually did a poll on this, a public poll, to ask, do, do people think that women can be harmed by abortion? And there was actually, you know, recognition uh, from people that, yes, that is a risk. So it's some of these facts that need to get out of the debate. So I've given you my warning from uh, Victoria. Now it's time for, for your warning to Australia, because obviously uh, you're obviously aware that Australia is uh, holding a, a plebiscite, or it's yep. now being called a survey, whether to legalise same-sex marriage. New Zealand's had same-sex marriage for, for four years now, yep. probably. And so what's been uh, the consequences of that? What have you observed? Well, I actually put together a briefing sheet for Australian groups to be aware of what's happened in New Zealand. But just to give you a quick overview, um, for example, we have, um, we have, when people apply to be marriage celebrants now, they're being asked, will they marry same-sex couples? If they say, well, no, I don't believe uh, in same-sex marriage, I don't believe that's a form of marriage, that, that's my conscience saying that, they're being turned down. Now, we were promised by politicians that that would not happen, that uh, changing the definition of marriage would not force people to act or believe that change. Parliament agreed on that. They, they said it would not happen, uh, and yet that's not happening in practice. Secondly, uh, we as a, a uh, organisation, a charitable organisation, uh, they're trying to deregister us, and they say that it's because of our views on marriage and on traditional family, because it does not hold public benefit. So, you know, they, they came after us because of our views on marriage. There's been um, also uh, venues that are either withdrawing from offering their venue to the public because they know that they'll be hammered legally if they uh, turn down a same-sex wedding. Um, and there have been some venues who we know have changed their policy because of, of potential or actual investigation by the Human Rights Commission. Um, and one thing that's sort of come under the radar, which we've highlighted, is that because of immigrant groups coming in who recognise polygamy, it appears that the government is turning a blind eye to some of these arrangements in terms of uh, benefits and just the fact that they are in polygamous relationships. So, um, and of course, the whole safe schools thing, we've all, we're already going down that track. Government committee just a couple of months ago recommended that birth certificates should not be based on whether the doctor says well, you've got a boy, it should be based on whether what you feel is your uh, gender. And then we've also in schools got the gender ideology being pushed that gender doesn't matter yet, it's what you feel like. And if, if you feel like that uh, you want to identify as the opposite sex, you can use the opposite sex toilets. So it's the whole safety, it's the well-being of students, they're being pushed with this ideology as well. Yeah, particularly uh, in Australia, well, my home state, uh, Victoria, um, that sex and gender education are pretty much out of control. I mean, even though Safe Schools has been defunded at the, the federal level, in Victoria it's, it's still in, in full swing and it's being made mandatory in government schools. And then there's also another program, Respectful Relationships, which is about uh, degendering uh, schools. So, um, what, uh, can you go into detail, like, about New Zealand's equivalent? We haven't quite got, I mean, we've got a program called Inside Out, and there are certain programs that go into schools, but schools are not being forced to take them. Schools have been given the choice, and we, we think that's a pretty sensible approach, that the schools themselves determine what their communities want. Um, it's, I, yeah, if, if they made it mandatory in New Zealand, then we would certainly be attacking that. Um, but, I mean, there are some programs out there that are hopeless, um, and they're not, you know, there's, there's bullying programs out there that don't rec actually recognise all bullying. It's just certain groups that are bullied. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, it misses the point, and it's, they're, they're pushing their own agenda. Um, so, so we're sort of monitoring that, but we do believe that schools should have the ability to decide what programs they want, and the schools have to consult with the parents. And the, the birth certificate issue, that's happening in Australia as well. And passports and driver's licences. Uh, th uh, thankfully though in Victoria, they, uh, our um, esteemed leader, Daniel Andrews, I'm sure you've heard yes. of the, heard of the yes. name, they, they tried to amend uh, the, the uh, Birth Deaths Act to uh, 
make it you could change the gender on your birth certificate every six months. It could be male, female, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we're, you know, this is a worldwide push. This whole gender ideology. I mean, I think they've moved on from uh, making marriage genderless, and now they're just making all things genderless. Um, and it's a direct attack on traditional family, the importance of mothers, fathers, you know, sons and daughters, this whole complementarity of the sexes. You know, they talk about the fact that people discriminate uh, in marriage. The fact of the matter is nature discriminates. I mean, only a male and a female can produce a child. Nature discriminates. So if we're talking about discrimination, best to um, have an argument with nature first. Now, obviously, we've talked about the, the upheaval that uh, you're facing in New Zealand on these uh, issues and the, and the ones that, the, that are coming up before the parliament. But do you have do you have friendly politicians, uh, allies in the in the media who? Yeah, um, I mean, I'll tell you who they are. But then I'd have to kill you. So um, uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there are there are some on side that understand the concerns, and they are in, in a number of parties, both left and right. Um, wing parties. So, you know, you just, you have to make um, contact with them, you have to feed them the information so that they have the strength to stand up and, and you know, give them some spine, basically, but it has to be based on good factual information. Um, and so we see that as quite an, an important role as well. But it's also, I mean, our main role is to inform and educate families and parents and make them aware of what's going on and get them to speak up. You know, and I was pleased to see in the Australian debate that a lot of parents are, are getting very brave and starting to speak up. Um, and for example, in the UK, I see the parents of a little six-year-old uh, have started to speak up about this gender confusion being pushed in schools. Um, and you know, the whole um, gender confusion around uniforms and use of toilets. So um, I think it's empowering parents that, to know that they can speak up and be supported. Uh, in Australia, where uh, where we're lucky that we have a number of politicians who are, who are prepared to uh, you know raise these issues in Parliament, and also uh, a media, well, some of the media, which, for example, with the Safe Schools program, I mean that was uh, introduced, um, it was funded by the Labor government, but yes. uh, was it began to be implemented under the. Uh, Liberal national government, but nobody had actually read it until the <laughs> Australian newspaper. They started publishing a number of pieces. You know, this is what's actually in the program, and then uh, there was a backbench revolt. And a week later, the education minister said, "Like, we're you know taking half of it out, and we're not going to fund it uh, when, when its funding runs out." So there was you know, just a decisive action. I noticed with uh, you had your uh, at. Uh, had a, it's, it's not focused on the, it's forum on the family. That's, yeah. that, that's right. You had um, Bill English on. The impression that I got from your interview with him is that the the politicians in New Zealand they're they're very hesitant to interfere with the bureaucracy, which is the one that are trying to deregister you and overseeing the introduction of the, these programs. So is, is that is that a problem in New Zealand? The the politicians seem to seem to just let their bureaucracy do what they want? Yeah, I think they say there's a hands-off and they shouldn't um, have political interference. Um, but at the end of the day, they still are the ministers of those organisations. They still oversee it and they should call them to account. So to me, it seems a bit of a cop-out. And I know that the minister for that oversees charities was hammered with emails saying, you know, pull the charities board into line. Why are they targeting family first? One group, and there's lots of other lobby groups organisations doing similar type of work, why aren't they being targeted as well? Now, they would they would just say, oh look, we don't get involved in day-to-day -day running administrative decisions, we just oversee the law, but I, I think no, they need to oversee the bodies as they implement the law as well. And the argument is that they're interpreting the charity's law wrong, that they're taking a very subjective view. And, and when, it, when it went to court, see we've already been, we've already gone to court two years ago and actually won and so this is their second shot. Yeah, I've heard about that. And um, what the judge basically said to the charities board was, get over your bias. Even if you don't like family first, get over it and apply the law properly. I mean, they were rebuked by the judge, but they're back for another fight. We'll be ready. We're kitted up, ready to go. Because uh, 
from my point of view, I mean, Bill English is probably the you know one of the most conservative prime ministers you've had in a while, but he's not interfering with any of these things. I certainly think that's something that should change in New Zealand. That the the politicians they're they're elected by the people. Um, they're not they're not just there to be you know guardians of, of the bureaucracy. They should. You know, I, I don't like this or bureaucracy is independent, no, you're, you're elected to, to implement the policies and regulations yourself. Yeah, he's, I mean, Bill English is certainly conservative, he's certainly more conservative on uh, abortion, uh, he's very strong pro-life um, on euthanasia as well, he's good, he's good on the marijuana, he wants a considered approach, researched approach. Um, for some reason, in his first interview when he took over from John Key, he capitulated on the marriage issue and basically said, you know, um, that I would probably vote for it now. Um, and of course, as you would have seen in the video from our forum on the family, my question to him, you know, because he says, well, it doesn't affect my marriage. Same-sex marriage doesn't affect my marriage. Uh, and as I said to him, well, polygamy doesn't affect your marriage either. You know, so there's no, there's not a lot of logic to it. It's, um, so I'm not quite sure why he capitulated like he did on that. But I, I, I do take great heart from a number of your Australian MPs that they are, they are standing up strong and supporting a no vote, um, and I think all power to them. Yeah, it's it's definitely in in Australia. Um, we we do have there's you know, conservative MPs there. You know they're they're not afraid to obviously have the you know the scorn. You know we've got you've probably got an mm. aggressive uh, media in in New Zealand. It's the it's the same in Australia, but yeah, there's there's definitely a lot more tenacity to yeah. our politicians. Now, um, my final question was, uh, you probably also know this in Australia, we're seeing the, the rise of a new Conservative Party, the Australian Conservatives. Mm -hmm. There's also um, One Nation, which is considered somewhat of a... I'd probably, right. pro probably say a popular, populist party. Uh, do, you, do you see a... a so a resurgent conservative movement or conservative party happening in New Zealand? So we sort of have a, I mean, I don't know if they would think of themselves as one nation, but we have New Zealand First, which um, I, is, I think is sort of similar. I haven't sort of closely analysed their policies, um, but it sounds like they're similar. Um, we did have a conservative party, well, there is one running, but they, I don't think they'll have any success at this election. Uh, they almost got into Parliament last election uh, and then there was a major falling out with the leader and he ended up in court and is still going through the court process um, and uh, it, it really has lost um, all traction that it had. Is there a conservative movement in New Zealand? Yes there is, absolutely. Um, there is definitely a vote there looking for a home um, and you know I think if um, if a similar conservative movement party was set up properly uh, with credibility in New Zealand, it would get a lot of support. Uh, often in politics, it's there, there's the support there. It's just a matter of you know, organising it and something to vote for, and making sure that you know, politics uh, just yeah. doesn't doesn't get in the way. Yeah, yeah. And it was there three years ago, and it was so close. Um, I think you know they were uh, they got just under four percent. They needed five percent. Um, there was still just under 100,000 votes I think they got um, in a population of, uh, what's the voting, I think it's coming up to 3 million um, voters I think, so you better not quote me on those figures, but um, look they were close, they were very close and uh, definitely there is a movement and I think with a strong credible party um, they, would, they would get into parliament and see because what's happened is that national are centre-right but they have moved so close to the centre that they're almost centre-left uh, to take ground off Labour Party which is the left, centre-left party um, and I think there's frustration that there's all this area over here that, that aren't being attended to. Well Bob, uh, thanks for your, for your insight. Mm -hmm. uh, good luck with the, the upcoming uh, battles uh, with regard to abortion and euthanasia and Australian audience, I hope that you learned about uh, uh, what, what's happening in New Zealand with regard to, to family issues and uh, stay tuned for, for the other videos that we'll have uploaded. Thank you.
This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.